I think the first thing we're just going to go over is the, the minutes. minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I know how Jeff loved those minutes. You know, I can make a request that we waive reading of the minutes and just share the screen and put it up there. That would help. Yeah. Um, Winnie so. likes reading the minutes. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Madeline came late. She didn't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> we do need someone to second it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was sent out this morning as well. So if you guys um, have any questions about it, let me know. It's all good. Questions about the minutes? Yeah. I think they were excellent. Thank you. I know you definitely read them. Of course I did. Um, Jessica Sini, unfortunately, will not be able to attend today. She um, gives her best wishes to all. Okay. We have any questions about the minutes? Okay. Um, I believe next up is um, introducing the new uh, eighth grade SLT um, student representatives. Mm. So we do have them all here. Wow, very impressive. Yes. We... Could we could we demand that they turn on their cameras? So yes. this is a, a new day in remote world. <laughs> is that, is oh, that's that possible? Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Megan and Jolene. Megan. Suzanne, where are you? Suzanne's camera shy. <laughs> there oh, she is. There you go. How about that? Sorry, my, my computer is being slow. <laughs> Why don't you guys introduce introduce yourselves? Um, your name, class, academy. Who wants to go first? Yeah. Why don't we um, start with uh, Megan? Okay. Um, I'm Megan Kwok. Um, I'm from class 802, and I'm um, in the academy of scientific research. Excellent. Welcome. Uh, Morgan. Hi, I'm Morgan Lavella. Um, I'm in 810 in the class of arts, uh, the Academy of Arts and Humanities. You're not related to Vito, are you? <laughs> Unfortunately, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like your style. All right. Uh, Jolene. Uh, hello, I'm Jolene. You guys don't have to try to pronounce my last name because I know many of you will unfortunately fail. I'm also an 802 and I'm in the Academy of Scientific Research. We could just try to spell it. I've done that often. <laughs> okay, excellent. And Suzanne. Suzanne. Hi, I'm Suzanne. Um, I'm from the Academy of Business and Law. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And would you guys like to to say anything, anything. I, I know, Morgan, I had brought an issue to your attention. Did you get a chance to follow up on that by any chance? Um, yeah, I spoke um, to Anya about it. Okay, did you want to introduce the idea to, to the group um, and see uh, if, if they agree, if there's something that can be done? Uh, yeah, sure, so um, her idea, uh, it was simple. It was just, there's been just like a, the girl's bathroom was just kind of a mess so her idea was to put um i saw i, I think my uh elementary school used to have it like um like the small garbage cans like that were like like that attached to like the walls of the bathroom stalls so i think that was her idea just to like keep um like it more cl clean because yeah i'm not sure if that would be possible um so i, I have no idea how they'd be able to do that um or the custodian staff but that was um a girl from i think it was 710 yeah um yeah anya that was her idea so i talked to her about that just to make it cleaner yeah and i think she had felt that it would be um maybe some of the girls would be a little less embarrassed um by having it there and not you know moving moving around in, in other places was that the issue that she had mentioned um she that might have been one of the reasons, but I think most is it's just the girls' bathroom has been kind of a mess lately. Um, so I think she thought that that would help. And I think it would also to have that in the individual stalls, mm -hmm. um, just like the garbage can, there could be a bag in there. And I think that would probably um, make it a little bit more neat. Excellent. And well, for the other student SLT members, if anyone comes to me with well, lots of issues, I guess not every issue, 
Um, I'm going to pass it to you guys. Okay, so you could talk to the students. And, you know, that's going to be what I'm going to do from now on. Okay, so hopefully kids will come and we'll get lots of stuff your way that you could problem solve on. Okay, does anyone have any opinions? Do you think we can do that? Mina, what do you think? Is that a doable thing? Yes, absolutely. I think so. Okay. So I guess we need to, you know, usually when we speak to the custodial staff, I had mentioned it, they, they always have a different perspective, like a very practical perspective and a long institutional memory of having tried something in the past and what went wrong. So you could expect some, um, I don't want to call it pushback, just some, you know, the other side of the story and maybe why they don't do that because they usually think things through and, and have the ups and downs. But maybe we can make the case and, you know, they're usually pretty open-minded as well. All right. What else do we have? What's next? Next on the agenda, we have the DESA, the DESA results. DESA, okay. You put that on there. Yeah. Nina, <laughs> did you want to talk about DESA or you want me to say a few words on it? You could start and then I can chime in. Sure. So I know DESA um, was a controversial program um, where the teachers were sort of, I guess, answering questions about students, um, not academic so much, it's like social emotional type of questions. And, you know, people had a lot of opinions about it, including me. Um, and we did it, we took it seriously. And I, I think to some extent that we, we are learning some new things. So I don't wanna say I was wrong because I don't think it was a good setup and probably a poor use of money. And I don't think it was particularly done well by the city, to say the least. But at the same time, if we can get something out of it and a few kids come to our attention that we can help in any way, then I think that's what we're trying to do. So we're meeting some different kids. And um, I, I do think there are some students who maybe would benefit from just having a closer relationship to the school that maybe we didn't know them that well. And they seem, at least several students seem happy to have gotten some attention and do want to work with us. So, you know, while I thought it had the potential to be a complete waste of time, I, I would say it has not turned out to be a complete waste of time. And we're making the best of it and getting some positive uh, preliminary results or interest. That's been my, my uh, impression so far. Yeah, I mean, I can add on, I, I did uh, go over all of the results with Ms. Ward, who has been analyzing the data for us, and they are completely um, aligned to some of the things that we have been seeing about difficulty uh, creating relationships, um, social emotional development in terms of interaction with other students. Um, so some of the information that has been provided has actually allowed us to put students into social groups. Um, which we didn't have that information before, it would have taken longer in terms of identifying students who may benefit from a social group. So again, we have been taking the information and we've been made, made I think, in some impactful decisions school-wide um, looking at that information. Um, like, I, like I said, it wasn't anything, uh, I would say, earth-shattering and new that we didn't know about our population of students, but definitely did um, expedite the price, process of getting some students into social groups. Yeah. So, and did anyone want to add on? I know that, um, and I, I, I still agree that it was a poor design, but, you know, I know some, some parents had some strong opinions on that as well. So if anyone had any thoughts, we're, we're happy to address them. You know, I, I think we are making the best of it. And I think that's what Mina had suggested, that we're going to, get what we can out of it and make it work for our school. And, you know, we have been looking real hard at it. We had a meeting with Ms. Ward. And so, you know, you I know. Would say, um, we're okay. Vito, did you want to ask? Yeah, did you, were you able to identify any specific individual children who had a need that you wouldn't have been able to identify uh, if you didn't do DESA? Honestly, I mean, there were a couple kids that I spoke to that I never knew and one specifically had very high grades. And I don't think I would have known him. I don't know where 
-hmm. And when I spoke with him, he seemed happy to have a discussion about some of this stuff. And so I would say yes, I don't mm -hmm. think to an earth shattering degree. And I also think- No, I think it would have just taken a little bit longer to be able to uh, get to know some of the students that were identified. Um, but I do think we eventually have been able to ascertain that information. Yes. But um, I think having the addition of Ms. Zabala as social worker was really helpful because she was able to kind of get to know some of the students rather quickly kind of say, hey, I think a perfect fit for this group or, or what do you think of this? So I think for us, I thought uh, for some of the students who were identified, uh, it was helpful because the students were wanting you know, that, that discussion um, and it did help to be able to get them someone to speak to quickly. Yep. And, and also in fairness, you know, having spoke to, you know, at least some of the kids a fair amount, I think the COVID thing has made quite a big difference in how well we know the kids. And you really like felt that because mm -hmm. you're talking to an eighth grade kid that's been remote since March of 2020 and then just started up again in the school. And, you know, I'm thinking on a, in a normal year, I, every eighth grade kid knows who I am and has had some contact with me, not in a disciplinary way, just somewhere, whether I went into the class or talked to them in the hall, like in some capacity until this year, because there's this huge gap. So I, I do think the DESA, if we did it four years ago, let's say, would have had even less of a positive impact because we would have probably identified every one of the kids by then. But with COVID, it, it hasn't been the worst timing for it. So that's my take. Yeah, listen, if it helps one kid, that's what I'd said in my email. If it helps one kid, yeah. then it's worth it. Then I think it's worth it. If that's yeah. if that's the bar, then maybe it's That's worth the bar, it. really, isn't it? I mean, shouldn't it be? Yeah. Well. I guess, you know, you could say maybe we could have helped more kids if they would have designed it in a more intelligent way. That's the way I would have suggested. Is there a feed, Jeff? Since you keep saying that, do you, are you given the opportunity to provide feedback so that they can, you know, you know, do address things that could have been done differently? I'm not sure. Like with the, with the, the, the developer, right? We, I, did you see the email that uh, was sent out that I got from uh, the, um, DOE, I think it was DOE testing, and the, the company that makes the or designs the DESA was very receptive to, um, to what their goals were and how they do things. So, I mean, if you really do have either on a UFT level or a personal experience level, things that you want to uh, address, I mean, you should probably, you know, shoot them an email and say, this was your experience. This is what you think they could do better. And who the heck knows? Maybe you'll get a little gold star. Okay. I doubt that, but uh, I may get a form email back, so I can get your input. <laughs> which is good. Gotta try, like, right? Anything, any little bit of, you know, praise, I'll, I'll accept. So, all right, great. So you want to move on to the next yes, uh, COVID order update. of business? COVID update. Uh, I have to say that um, the administration's doing a really great job in holding this together and figuring out all the ins and outs of this it's like almost like a complete full-time job mm -hmm. you know with the lists and who's on quarantine and it, it's been very disruptive to education just because how could it not be but i think we're in the same boat as every school in america so i don't know i don't know any thoughts mina on how we're um, doing we've been really fortunate that that i know of many schools who um do not have enough home kits to give out so we've been fortunate enough to have enough supplies for staff and for students. Um, we're averaging, today was a little bit better. I believe we only gave out uh, four classes, four test kits for classes. Yesterday was 10 classes received, received home kits. Um, we're trying to get the message out uh, to families that whether the students are quarantined or not, it is uh, 10 days that they must stay home. So there's a lot of um, emailing back and forth about clarifying when the return date is. And if the students still have symptoms after that 10th day and they are unable to pass the health screening, then they stay home. Um, so that is just getting the information and, and 
verifying the information. The students have been wonderful with emailing um, their assistant principals and families um, with the kind of the template that we gave, because um, it does help us then input this information into the DOE situation room. Um, we then have to have a case number, um, give out the tests, um, make sure that if a class received a kit um, and they've already passed their five days in which they have to take the second test, um, trying to figure out all of that and which class gets which test and what day has been a little um, overwhelming. Um, and I know, uh, Vito, I don't know if this is something that you can help with families with is the uh, absentee in terms of students who are receiving absent phone calls who are uh, unfortunately home uh, with COVID, that's, a, that's an automated phone call. They are, they are not present in school. They are absent. Um, I know we're getting clarification on how it is going to be co uh, coded correctly for the students, but these are just automated phone calls that are happening once they are registered as not being present in school. Who sends um, them out? Not us? No, no, it's it's from the main office. So once they get the list, it's, it's just that automated phone, the phone calls happen. Your child was absent today, your child was absent today. So I know many families are, are panicking, you know, my child has COVID, you know, that's why they're not here. Um, but just kind of clarifying that this is the way you, you aren't, you're not present in the building, but it, it, we're getting clarification on how to code it correctly. Um, and it will not impact the students in any way. So if they're not in the building and they are marked absent and it is coded for a COVID case, um, it's not going to impact them um, negatively in any way. Mina, so that message would, is trying to get out. Would COVID be different than any other sick? Would a, a regular sick be coded differently than a COVID sick? Um, that is, it, there are two different codes that we're trying to get in writing on which one that we have to use. So uh, one is that, you know, there's a doctor's note, it's a medical reason. There, when prior to January 3rd, it, there was, they were coded remote learning, mm -hmm. um, that they were present but learning remotely. Uh, but now that code is gone. So we're trying to figure out which is the appropriate code. So we're just waiting for clarification. Because it was prior to Jan uh, January 3rd, everything changed. Classes will no longer be quarantined. Um, that has eliminated that. So if classes are, are no longer having a partial quarantine, there is no remote instruction that it's happening, right? There's no synchronous instruction that that's happening. So trying to then change that in which codes, we have to get clarification on that. So if parents are receiving phone calls, if things get coded differently, we will go back and rectify that. But as of now, they're going to be marked as absent. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to give everybody the support they need. If a yeah. kid breaks his arm, it's got to be out 10 days. Absolutely. There's no you know. difference between that or COVID or anything else. It's, right. But we've always done that. Right. But in terms of remote instruction, yeah. there, is, there is absolutely no, uh, according to the Department of Education, effective January 3rd, uh, there is no uh, synchronous instruction that will happen for children who are home with COVID. Um, we've also asked the teachers to reach out. There are some students who are feeling fine um, and, and have tested positive for COVID and some that are really struggling and not feeling well. And if they're not feeling well, they, they should not have to go online and do work. They need to, to rest up and, and be healthy. So it's a, it's a lot of just outreach and how are you feeling and, and, and what, are you, uh, what are your symptoms right now? And you know, the work, we, we will work that out you know, in terms of, of what's necessary, but the health of the students are necessary um, to make sure that that is the priority. So I have a question um, because um, my son, they test uh, co uh, positive COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So my younger son in elementary school, mm -hmm. so I called the school regarding the absentness. They mm -hmm. say as long as he attending the work in Google Classroom, so he marked present. That is a situation that we're trying to get clarified with the superintendent. Um, we are receiving different information from the attendance office. Um, as well as the Department of Education. That's why we're saying as of right now, um, this is what we're told to code. However, mm -hmm. if, if that changes, then we can always go back and, and fix it. Um, oh, hi, Michelle. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Amina, while we're at it, I, I have a question. Last sure. Friday during the snowstorm, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is my understanding that the kids that are gonna be late due to the inclement weather will not be counted as late. Uh, I know a number of children arrived late and were made to fill out a late form. Mm -hmm. 
If they were made to fill out a late form, then um, I'll make sure that uh, the based upon the snowstorm that that gets changed in attendance. Okay, great, thanks. Because we did clarify, and I did call down to the main office and say no one is marked late today. Okay, so that, that didn't happen. That we can make sure we fix that. I also have a little concern regarding the quarantine times, academic learning. Mm -hmm. So my son was quarantined in the past weeks, and he will return tomorrow. Oh, yay. <laughs> Thanks, so, Bob. Because I just, I don't know that they, from January, they don't get any asynchronous works mm -hmm. because I was, he has no symptoms. So by we close contact with someone, so we went to uh, do the testing. So he has no symptoms, but mm -hmm. he's positive. So he did not go to school. Right. So he did not, he doesn't get any, that much work. Mm -hmm. And I am very concerned about it because such as math, you know, the, the knowledge is built up in yes. each other. So the math, can they, get, they can move on to one topic to another topic, such mm -hmm. as geometry to the uh, P algebra, you know? Yeah. So uh, he, in the math, he, he, did not, he was not able to do anything. So in reading, he is able to, he has the book for ELA, he has the book, he can answer the questions. Mm -hmm. For science, the science teacher, he was so caring and he gave him the notes. Mm -hmm. And even though for the science test, he asked the teacher, how can he take the test? The teacher allowed him to take the test in mm -hmm. at home. Right. For the math, he has the quiz last week, last Friday. Mm -hmm. He emailed the teacher said, I cannot take the test because I am quarantined. So the teacher did not reply his email. Mm -hmm. And he, I, I did tell him to be proactive, ask the classmate to get the notes and you can know what you learned. So um, by the, the math teacher did not reply him. He was a little concerned about his grade will drop because he missing one test, one quiz. Mm -hmm. So I told him maybe when he go back, he can ask the teacher how, how it works or something. If so, you can just, uh, if you can email me privately and I can make sure that um, I, I make sure that the teacher reaches out to your child as soon as possible. Yes, and, and because I think it's, it's possible for the teacher to post the notes for the, the students, for them to learn at home, for example. For this week, we learn about this and they can study at home right. because 10 day is, right. <laughs> it's not, uh, two days, you know, you understand right. no, my, my concern. Understand. Yeah. As a parent, yeah. that's what I see as a parent. Right. You know? but that's, but, that's kind of the difficulty right now when, when we did have a partial closure um, in terms of, you know, vaccinated or not vaccinated, um, there was real clarity in terms of um, the UFT teacher uh, contract and in terms of posting work. Um, right now, um, we have eliminated starting uh, this week. Um, uh, certain department meetings and professional development to be able to give the teachers time to post assignments and or just post classwork uh, for the students to complete. So there is kind of a dis discrepancy um, between what was allowed previously when you do have a partial um, closure and you really have the opportunity to work with the kids in there and then work with the kids at home. Um, so we are continuing to work on this. Please just email me uh, specifically if you'd like, like me to reach out um, to any teacher. I'll be more than happy to do that. Jeff, would you like to talk a little bit about this? I did, read, I did email the teacher, the math teacher before because um, the parent teacher conference, I did not get the link. Uh, so I emailed the teacher about how he, he does in school, but I never get any email back. So I don't know, maybe the teacher did not check the email or I don't know what's the case. Okay, okay. If you even, even now, if you can just message me privately, I'll make sure I take care of that, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So, Jeff, um, do you wanna add on to that in terms of posting work? Yeah, so we're, we're trying to get a little bit of clarification, um, I guess final clarification on how work should be posted because with the COVID thing, there were, I mean, teachers were getting some extra, you know, compensation because they were doing quite a bit of extra work trying to communicate to students with all the students out. 
Now, apparently that's been pulled back, okay? So tomorrow there's a, um, a UFT town hall meeting. And um, I'm hoping that's a little clearer as to what um, is exactly expected of, of teachers. Now, I do think, you know, it is our duty to try to get the information to students. You know, I, I am the UFT rep, but I, I understand your perspective as a parent. And I do think that we have to somehow figure out a way that kids don't fall behind because of this unfortunate situation. Um, to what extent that is, I'm not exactly sure. You know, part of me goes back to the days that before we had Google Classroom, where if a kid was sick, they, you know, got information from classmates as well. And there was a little bit of that communication going on. Okay. So I think sometimes technology creates a change that doesn't have to be exactly a change. You know, partially we should also be encouraging the kids to communicate with classmates for social reasons and for the unity of a class. But I think teachers should put, you know, certainly homework, which they do anyway, and any information that could benefit kids who are home. You know, it's not always uh, a battle for, hey, we will only do this much unless we're paid. There, there is a, a middle ground and there is common sense. But I would like to know the exact position because it is a little blurry to me. Like, Mina, do you feel like you're 100% clear on it or am I missing something? No, um, I'm not. I mean, I, I did have my academy prep today. Um, I did, Miss um, Wong, I know you were there. Um, I did kind of reiterate to the teachers that, um, you know, we are allowing, um, we have canceled all of our initiatives in terms of professional development mm -hmm. and department meetings so that teachers do have the opportunity um, to be able to contact students, see how they're feeling, yeah. posting assignments. So that is something that we're doing regardless of whatever the UFT or the DOE comes up with in terms of um, regulations. Uh, we feel that we need to give the teachers time to be able to do that, um, to also answer emails, to grade papers. Um, so that is what will Thank happen you. until the covert rates begin to go down which is also unfortunate because then we are stopping some of the initiatives that we have begun um, in terms of the teacher training to be able to allow uh, um, teachers time to post assignments. Yeah. So it, it's an overall challenging situation, um, but we're doing, again, what's best for the, my message to the teachers today, Winnie, I don't know if you can add on, was do what's right, do what's necessary, um, make sure that the students have the materials that they need and if you need additional time, you reach out. But as professionals, we're going to do what's necessary for our children. Yep. And, it, and if you write an email to a teacher asking for something, I mean, I'm not calling anyone out, but people should respond to emails, you right. know, and that's just, that's just the way it is, whether it's from a parent or a yes. student or mm -hmm. anybody, mm -hmm. you yes. should just respond. We all know that teachers, all teachers are different. Some people are willing to want above and beyond, but not everybody. You, we all know right. that. So well, we also I, have, we also have, I think it was about 20 teachers out with COVID. Right. So, yeah. if, you know, if someone also didn't reply, it could be that, you know, they have been absent and or out uh, for COVID, which, which is perfectly understandable, which, right. which has been a huge, yeah. Yeah. huge challenge since before uh, winter break and now. Um, which has been just making sure that we're not, we're trying to not have mass coverages, which I know many schools unfortunately have to do. A mass coverage for people to understand is putting multiple classes in one room and, and having um, a teacher watch them because we don't physically have the bodies uh, to cover a class. So um, like I said, we're stretched beyond belief. We have a brand new programmer, Ms. Larson, who's doing an amazing job being able to cover the classes and minimize the amount of coverages that are happening. Some teachers are working seven to eight periods straight. No um, it, with preps, um, they're exhausted. You know, one class effort or another because of the amount of teachers that are absent. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a tough situation right now. And like I said, if teachers aren't getting back to you, that, that should not happen. Please just let me know, email me privately, and I will make sure I, I 
handle that. I know for myself, uh, yesterday we spent four hours giving out COVID tests and I'm yet to respond to all the families that had emailed me yesterday, um, as well as today, just trying to touch base. And then when I, I actually had forgotten about the SLT meeting, I said, oh no, I have to do yeah. all these COVID letters. When am I going supposed to do this? Yeah. Uh, for family schedule, schedule right now is out. So um, we are having a, a difficult time contacting families who are in close contact, contacting, uh, giving the, the general overall letter that gets sent out by the situation room um, if we have a COVID case in the, in the school. Um, so with schedule being out, uh, that, that has been a big challenge. So I'm trying to do that through Operu this afternoon. So there, there are a lot of, every day seems to be a new challenge, but we're okay, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're doing well. Yeah, so, you know, again, thank, thank you for saying that. I was probably being a little harsh in what I said. Yeah, yeah. You know, because um, every teacher is in a different situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in general, communication is so important right now, especially with parents stressed out about kids not getting work like you are or falling behind. So, you know, I'm very sensitive to that, you know. But I do think, you know, being patient right now is important and realizing that teachers are in different situations depending on their own health and I guess the way their programs are playing out and things like that. So, you know, we all need to work with, with one another. I mean, you're certainly right that some people might be a, a little, you know, more diligent in getting back and communicating and other teachers may be more diligent in other ways. But I think right now communication is important and, you know, any teacher I speak to, I say, try to get back to people quickly. Even if you're going to give them an answer they don't like, you know, give them an answer. <laughs> I think that's really important. So, um, thank you. you. You're, you're very welcome. Um, yeah, excuse me. Uh, hello. Yeah, I have one. Hello. Yeah, this is a home. I have a suggestion. Uh, maybe you can consider about it. I think this is a special situation now for the uh, so many kids got maybe got uh, quarantined uh, one day or the other, maybe different groups of kids got quarantined uh, or, you know, so maybe the each teacher could consider because they have the could consider maybe group uh, emailing the classmates or the like each subject student uh, emailing the whole class the like uh, the important uh, materials or and also the homework work of the day. Mm -hmm. So we don't mind um, you know uh, get extra emails. So like uh, if anyone uh, you know because the teacher didn't need to follow specific with each student. So that's my one of my cents. I don't know if yeah. it's work. That is something that we talked about in the instructional team as well. Just having mm -hmm. the assignments posted in one area in their homeroom page so that mm -hmm. they'll be able to do that. Oh. Susie, you're late for class. You hear the bell? <laughs> So I was I was just telling Mr. File because um, I know in some homerooms um, there's actually um, like a monitor that writes the homework on the board every day and kind of go over it during PM homeroom. The other suggestion could be that another student would also do the same thing on the uh, homeroom Google page. I believe every single homeroom has a, a homeroom Google page that they check for important notices, um, important information like you know that's going on in the school. And perhaps an added step could be that um, one of the monitors posts like, oh, today's homework is X, Y, Z, but also here are like, you know, some of the important like notes or what we did in class um, for their classmates to review that, you know, unfortunately have to quarantine. That would be a great idea. Let the mm -hmm. student take the initiative to yeah. be responsible. You know, we want them to be a global citizens. Yeah, I think I like this idea, you know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was just thinking, just this is just an idea that popped into my head. You know, we're always thinking of ways of uh, the kids getting community service. So this is more directed toward our um, student representatives. I think it would be kind of a cool idea if kids volunteered to do like little video reviews of classes, maybe, where like, you know, to get some credit where you say, hey, today in social studies, we did this and we learned about this. And this was fun and here were some key points and then maybe put it up on the classroom thing to give and that's from student to student so um 
the students who are at home are sort of connecting to their classmates. The students who are there are taking, you know, a really active part in helping people. And, you know, I always used to say National Junior Honor Society credit, and it used <laughs> to be like the world was coming to an end and kids were so excited about that, and you mean I get an hour and, and all that. But now whenever I bring it up, no one knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so maybe we need to create um, a different incentive plan of sorts. Um, but that, that might be fun. What do you guys think as far as our uh, student representatives? Is that a stupid idea? Is it a good idea? Don't hesitate to tell me if you think it's a bad idea. I'm not that sensitive. <laughs> Any thoughts? Um, I think it's a good idea. Um, I, my class actually did something like that in seventh grade because um, like someone would just post everything on the Google Classroom page at the end of the day. And um, we were supposed to get like, like a bit of community service hours from that. What about doing it as a video? Or maybe even doing it as like a group video where you can make it kind of fun? Um, well, I don't know if like a group video would be like the most time efficient thing, but um, like Individual. maybe if there's like a designated a person video. who do like a video. Yeah, like groups. Yeah. Kids have one um, each day. A different kid? I don't yeah. know. It would, like, it would seem a little bit more, more interesting, maybe. I don't know. How about this? Why don't, if, if, it's a, if you guys think it's a good idea, will one of the student representatives like pilot that in their class? Would anyone volunteer to do that? Try it out for the next week or so. Yeah, try it out. Room. Try it out. I'll think about uh, one or two students work together, maybe. Yeah, one or two students could work together. Vito likes to, um, you know, film everything. <laughs> maybe he volunteer to come in and, you know, <laughs> create, <laughs> yeah, create these little, uh, these little videos. Um, but that'd be great if, if, if you guys can maybe put it together and see how it works with a class for a few days and see what feedback you get from kids. And, you know, then maybe, look, it's not something we need to do school-wide. It's something that if kids were interested and wanted to contribute, you know, and help the kids who are home with COVID, it would be a nice thing. And of course, you would have to get permission to put your, you know, fit, you know, if we don't have parental permission. So Great. thought. Do we have any questions or additional concerns? I believe next up is a PTO update. Hey, how are you? Hey. So, unfortunately, our PTO meeting, we we're supposed to have um, Mr. Halligan, great presentation, very impactful, but as you all know, because of COVID, we were, had to cancel it. We will be doing a remote PTO meeting, um, I guess, for the foreseeable future. I would love to get back and do it, but I just can't imagine that it's going to happen. Uh, what I would like to say to the, the students is let's pretend or hope that we're going to have a normal graduation, including a normal um, a prom, which is usually the, I think this year would be June 6th, the day before Brooklyn Day that we have off. It's not called Brooklyn Day anymore. Um, and so you guys start thinking about playlists that you'd like, um, all I say for radio. And same thing with the graduation. Uh, the graduation pre-show that we do. Um, that'll be on you to, to get me songs and get me YouTube links, and then I'll put it all together and uh, I'll put it out there for you. Uh, we are some uh, interesting news uh, that's rumor slash still quiet. Um, there's going to be some announcement for the dg and um, for next year coming soon. Middle schools are Middle schools are supposed to be up sometime this week, probably Friday. People have tried to get into the My Schools account and do middle schools, and they're having difficulties. Uh, I believe, Krista, will still be a lottery unless something drastically changes. So if you have a fifth grader, I know some of us do, uh, that's an issue that you're going to have to worry about. Uh, we do not know if um, G&T will be reimagined this year. Uh, what I'm hearing is they're going to do what they did last year. So it would be a 
recommendation by teachers for the in, for kids who are in the pre-K. We'll get recommendations by teachers. Everyone who wants it will apply and it'll be a lottery out of those kids who qualify. Now that's what I'm hearing it's going to be. We won't really know. And then down the road, it's gonna be some kind of an expansion. Uh, the new chancellor and the new mayor is very, um, some good news is they're very, very clear that at least that um, aspect of it for GNTs that we, most of our kids have gone through, um, which is the separate GNTs will be uh, expanded in some form going forward. I'm getting less um, positive news with the middle schools, schools like Krista, um, they're still, you know, negotiating and figuring it out, but, uh, who knows, who knows what'll happen. So, Rita, so, Rita, I have a question for you. Okay. Because, because I have, um, a uh, fifth grader. So my friend told me when you fill, fill in the application, right, there's 12, uh, spots. Mm -hmm. So that's what she told me. She said, if you really want to go in Makarov, you just put in one, two, three. Other than that, you don't put anything. Oh, <laughs> so, I think that's been tried before. Um, you, you may get really messed up because really? if you don't get the three, then they can put you anywhere. Uh, or, or really, it'll default back to your zone school because everybody does have a zone middle school. Oh, okay. I, I just afraid it will not fall in my young school because our young school is Tiger 201, you know, which is a great uh, middle it's a good, school. It's a good middle school. Yeah. Tigers, there are rivals and stuff, but it's a, it's a good middle school. You don't have any rivals. I was just going to say that. <laughs> oh, you I was just going to say that. You've been brainwashed with the corporate... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so so I just afraid if you not fall in our young school, if you go to any random school, you know, and yeah. and our zone school run our spots, you know. So I'm yeah, I would I would do the three I would through the I would do the three um Krista ones and then Diker and then probably McKinley honors too. They don't have honors class now, right? They don't have superintendent program, right? Do so where at McKinley or anywhere? Any well, anywhere. They don't have right. No more. Well, seats. so if let's say that there were, let's say that there were fifty seats that used to be McKinley Honors, mm -hmm. and there were fifty seats that used to be Diker Honors. Those fifty seats will now be a lottery district wide. Oh, I see. I thought they don't have the superintendent program anymore. So, so they have fifty seats that are now. They're not. They're not a. They're not a they're not a GNT seat. They're an open seat, but they're open for the entire district. Oh, I Whereas got you. Previously, you had to test into those fifty seats mm -hmm. or be zoned to that school. Is that oh. right, Miss Siddiqui? Yes. Miss, yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure. Of that. <laughs> okay, thank you. But but you know, I, I I think that you really though would really be great okay. as a PTO president next year, Tracy. <laughs> I think this is, uh, I think like we're going to recruit you. I think you have what it takes. I don't know, I'm seeing some talent here. <laughs> only only when my, my younger son get in my college. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I wish I could do that for you. Hey, Susie, did you have a question in the chat of the zoned high schools? Was that your question? Yeah. Yes, so there, there are, right? So they talked about taking away the zones in general. Um, leaving everyone completely baffled as to what they were talking about. But now the zones are all back. Is that correct, Vito? I know you're on top of so, this. Oh, yeah. I mean, not all schools, not all people had um, geographical schools. Only some did. So district, uh, Manhattan now has a, has a, a borough-wide zone. So anybody in Manhattan gets first preference to a bunch of those schools. Um, previously, there were more strict zones, geographical priorities, we call them. Um, as far as we're concerned, the schools that our kids would have attended, Fort Hamilton High School, Bay, uh, not Bay Ridge Prep, it's um, um, uh, Brook Telecommunications now, and New Utrecht, um, we do have priority for those schools, but I'm not sure if it's district priority or if it's borough priority. Okay. Can anybody, um, Mina, we really, really don't know. No one knows. It's so. No one knows. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't. No, it's I, not I even your fault. I can check with Mr. Mazatovsky. Yeah, um, I bet you she doesn't know. Yeah, my my feeling okay. is they were making a lot of decisions that um, were probably 
um, loosely connected to someone's idea of equity at some level with a lot of um, problems attached to it that were not considered and people got confused. And, you know, look, like I talked about as far as communication, you, not everyone's going to agree on things, but there needs to be clarity and everyone needs to understand them and they need to know the reason why certain changes are being made. And I think they failed on all those counts, so they ended up going back to the zones. But even with Vito saying, you don't really understand the zones now. So, you know, there's only so much you could use a pandemic as an excuse. I think everyone deserves to understand what's going on, because if you have kids going to high school, you'll feel a lot of stress as far as where they're going to go. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll do well as we always have, and kids will go to the high school that they want to go to whether it's a specialized high school or not, I always feel like no matter where our kids have landed, they've done really well. I can't tell you how many kids don't end up going to specialized high schools and then come back and visit us. And they're like, oh, I'm going to Boston University. I'm going to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just all great schools, all the same schools that the specialized kids are going to. It's yeah. sort of interesting. Um, sometimes even better. You know, kids who went to telecommunications, kid graduated with a 3.9 from the University of Michigan. It was like, oof, nice. On Wall Street, making more money than me already. <laughs> Kids are jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So what's next on, um, on our agenda? I so know. we have um, an IA update from John. Um, the play, unfortunately, had to be moved to February due to all the quarantining uh, with the students. Um, and the ASR concert as well. And the, yes, the ASR concert that was um, scheduled and uh, trips. Yeah. yeah, we had the I play that was supposed to be for ASR and Arts and Humanities this week that had to be um, postponed, um, hopefully for later on in the school year. Um, and then in terms of NIA, um, they are requiring proof of vaccination uh, for participants um, in order for them to be on the basketball team, uh, gymnastics and dance, as well as the mu musical theater um, students. So um that is already um i believe in effect uh we do we have any budget updates mina are we still a lot of money <laughs> i don't know i'm sorry i i've just been giving out COVID tests i don't really know anymore <laughs> mr really diki can i can i pretend yeah, that I'm mr Berman for one minute pop on the screen sure, sure. Budget. <laughs> uh -oh. sure. so so i i think he's okay to for me to share this is his news but i i the auditorium AC yeah. project is going to go through, and he's very proud of that. Yes. I'm really happy. He's got some great things happen with that, and it'll be the cafeteria and the auditorium. And I want and to thank him in abstention right? there. What? Didn't we get a great deal on it? Like we really did well. Uh, for well, you know. negotiated to half a mil. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an, you know I, I don't want to talk because I don't want to ruin it. But uh, yeah, the 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 deal that he got's a great deal only. Only as it um, relates to the DOE, not if it was relating to Jeff's house. <laughs> if, it was, if it was Jeff's house, you would be really upset. But right now, it's exciting um, to actually have air conditioning yes. in the auditorium, in the lunchroom. Uh, you know, it, it could be quite dreadful in the lunchroom in the summer as well as the auditorium. Thankfully, I don't have an auditorium in my home. So um. <laughs> um, the other thing, um, Mina, maybe okay. you can help me. Sure. Um, I know we wanted to do a YouTube channel for the school. Yes. Do you want to assign someone to that? And I'll work with them and get it set up. However, because you need to get uh, a subscribers yeah. and you need to be uh, in existence for a certain period of time. Okay. So it hits a threshold so you could do live streaming and do other stuff. Okay. And uh, maybe we could do it Let in conjunction. Ask, uh, the person first and then I will have them. Now, okay. We might be able to do it in conjunction with the parent Academy. Maybe. I don't know if yeah. the same colors, the same themes, whatever. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, I just like to help you before I leave. Uh, don't say that, Vito. You're gonna make me cry. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to a lot of schools. You know, Brooklyn Tech for a while. Two two nine, great schools. But I have a special, special um, uh, attachment to this school. Oh. Well, have another kid. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> <With who? laughs> I have to ask for volunteers from the audience. <laughs> Morgan, you didn't Morgan. hear that. I'm sorry, Morgan. 
Chris, did Morgan disappear from the screen? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Last thing is just if there's any other questions. Um, yeah, this was a very efficient meeting. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the one thing I just want to end with is that, you know, we've had to stop. Um, we're, we're hoping on Monday we, we'll get the kids going from classroom to classroom again. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, they they're, are staying in the classroom. We're trying to eliminate as much contact in the hallway as possible. Um, they do go to tech and they do go to the lunchroom and for phys ed. Um, and peer tutoring has stopped. And, and that's something that I really want to bring back. I mean, it was really, really successful um, in terms of getting the students, getting their community service hours, and also getting this, the eighth graders to almost mentor, mentor the, the sixth graders. So that's something that we do want to get back as soon as possible, or unfortunately, because of exposure reasons, we have eliminated or stopped some of those programs right now. And we are working towards getting them back and getting the kids in the hallway and walking around and monitoring again and um, as soon as possible. Yeah, and, and as far as our student representatives, don't hesitate to, to jump into the mix. You know, come here, bring issues, bring ideas, bring thoughts, be entertaining. You know, a bunch of adults talking in little boxes could be a little boring. <laughs> You guys could add a lot of flavor to these meetings, so we would love we would love for you to do that. So don't be shy, okay? And you really come here with ideas and thoughts and speak to uh, the students in the school. I think especially now, uh, the students having a voice would be uh, very much appreciated by them uh, with everything going on and all these policies coming down that none of us have control over. Yes. That's for okay. you, Susie. Yeah, Susie, come on, Susie. Come on. Susie, you were never shy in my law class. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea about pupil path? I just received an email. I didn't read it yet. It just says down, and I, and I didn't know. It's complete. The whole system is down. Um, so I didn't get a chance. I did receive an email. I haven't really read it thoroughly, but as of right now, it's still down. Um, I have been getting complaints from students that something that I may send to them on uh, through, via pupil path or schedule if they have an Android phone that it comes up um, all, all messed up and, and the fonts are all over the place. Um, for our students who are here, are you finding that like Morgan or Jolene or Megan, are, are you finding that that um, when you get something from pupil path that it's not clear or that the font is, is kind of disoriented? Uh, for me, it just like doesn't let me log in because I've been trying and then it just says like your authentication has failed. So I just haven't gotten anything. Okay. Okay. That's sad. Do you guys miss pupil path? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm just asking the kids. They, they may not really like pupil path that much. So I'm just kidding. All right. So do we have any more questions? Any of the teachers or parents? Any thoughts? Victoria, Sarah? Putting you guys on the spot. Got Winnie Wong here in my little area. Um, I just want to say the kids have been wonderful. And even though they're staying in the classroom all day, I know it's quite, you know, annoying to stay into one classroom all day. And for the teachers who are here, um, they're just working so hard. And for parents, thank you for your patience. We're trying to get information out as quickly as we can. Um, it, it was a rough break with lots of positive cases being given um, or reported over the break and, and trying to get into the situation room. And even today, uh, trying to get into the situation room, which is our COVID reporting system. And I just, we just really appreciate your patience um, and understanding that it, it is a, a lengthy process reporting one COVID case. Um, so when you have one COVID case and then all of a sudden school-wide, you may have 25 COVID cases, um, it does, become quite an ordeal to be able to report them correctly and get the information out to families as fast as possible, as well as test kits out to students. So thank you for your patience. We really appreciate it. Yep. Well, so if, if that's all you know we have for today, I wanna to thank everyone for coming to our meeting. I think we, we covered a fair bit of ground and you know, feel free to communicate and let us know if you have any thoughts or any questions. And um, for the students, 
maybe one of you guys could look into that idea, add a little flavor for the kids who are at home. Like I said, a pilot project means trying it out in one class and seeing if it's popular and successful. Um, I think having one of you guys pilot it would make the most sense mm -hmm. as our student leaders. All right. All right. Other than that, everyone have a fantastic day. And I know Great Mina's night. got a lot of work to do, so we're going to let her. I'll stay on if anybody has any questions for a moment or two. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening.